the condition of our society starts with the home, starts with the family. Now, I'm going to show you one problem, a foundational problem above theology. Or So we have theology, we have the pulpit, we have the house of God. But then the Twin Towers was known for, ha were known for having two foundations. So watch this. Pay attention. Ephesians 5 and 22. You know this. If anyone gets up while I'm reading this text or they start fidgeting, they have a spirit. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Look, look around. See who, who moving. Mm -hmm. There it is. Watch this. As to the Lord. Say, as to the Lord. All right, says, when you are married, you should treat your husband how you treat God. Now, all of y'all saying amen, single. I didn't say boyfriends. That's why you don't have no money because you're submitting out of season. No, 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 no. I pastor a lot of people, and when I tell you there are people who are talented, gifted, smart, but they won't ever do anything because they treat their boyfriends and or their girlfriends like spouses. All right, yeah. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, not the house. Even as Christ is the head of the church. So this is what has cursed our culture. What's cursed our culture is we have cursed God by how we interact with our spouses. So watch this. There is a curse and you can see it in every society. Watch this. If you want to see the condition of society... Look at the family. Look at the children. So we, we, we are under a curse. God did not do it. God did not do it. Watch this. Pay attention. Look at they would say, we've done it. So hear me. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. We kind of we run over that. Like you submit to God, submit to your husband. So if you don't do that, you're in sin. For the husband is the head of the wife. Now, I thought y'all want to be married so bad. So say amen. Because that's what you're signing up for. I saw this disgusting video. Of a, of a marriage, of a, a wedding. And as the, as the preacher was uh, 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 leading them in vows, she said everything, but when she got to the submission part, she wouldn't say it. This me. And if you don't say the submission part, I'm going to drop your hand. I'm sorry for having y'all come out, but this is over. Number one, you're not willing to do it in obedience to God. Number two, you thought it was cool to embarrass me in front of everybody. And watch this, Pastor V. You'll be surprised, not y'all, y'all holy, but you'll be surprised how many Christian women agree with what she did. And if you agree with what she did, you're missing the Holy Ghost. If you agree with what she did, there is a, hear me, you have not met Jesus yet. Here's what, I said you have not met Jesus yet. 
Here's why. Because every person that knows Jesus, we learn this by way of the Holy Spirit. Male or female, we have to all submit to something. No Christian is left unsubmitted. Watch this. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, hear me. The lack of submission is equivalent to having sex out of marriage. It's sin. So when you have a hard time submitting, pay attention, even to your supervisor that is not a Christian. You need to go somewhere and pray because it is the personality of Christ to submit. Pastor, how you know? Jesus says this. He says, when you see me, you see the Father. I don't say anything different. I don't come to do anything different that everything I say, everything I've done, I've gotten from him. The only reason you and I have access to salvation is because, watch this, God didn't make Jesus die on the cross. Jesus said, not my will. Look at your neighbor and say, submission. Okay, now, be seated. Watch this. Now, watch this, Christ for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself. It's what? Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything there to their husbands. Here it is. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church. So watch this. That means submission is not the hardest thing for a man. Love is. This is why a man will wash his car and polish it with his own hands. And will not take you out on a date and give you flowers. Because outside of the Holy Ghost, he don't want to love nothing but what he's worked for. So let me help you understand this. No man can love you properly outside of Jesus. So the tug of war that you're having with your boy's friend. Is because he has not fallen in love with God first to be able to experience that love and disseminate that to you. It's so, y'all still gonna give me an offering today? I'm not I ain't talking about the church, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about the cash app. Watch this. As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So watch this. How do you know when a man loves you? Because he's willing to give up himself slash die for you. I ain't talking about take bullets. I ain't say that. I'm saying giving up his will. Remember, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows he's about to die on the cross. But he says two times, Lord, take this cup from me. Third time he says, tell you what. Not my will, but thine will be done. That's what love looks like. I will to do something else. But I've committed to loving you like Christ loves his church. And you know that Christ loves the church not because he did miracle signs and wonders. He loves the church because he died. So giving a miracle sign and wonder, a.k.a. took me to a restaurant, bought me flowers. We spent time together, went on a vacation, does not mean you love me.
I need you to die to your genitalia when it gets an erection from somebody that ain't me. Now here's, now you're shouting, but I'm gonna make you sit down. Husbands, not boyfriends. You thought you were gonna be the only one that just could do what you, no, I, 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 I. No, no, he, he ain't violating God if y'all go together and he likes somebody else. So if your boyfriend cheat on you, that's not adultery. That's fornication. God don't see y'all's relationship. He only sees his relationship with him. Why y'all not standing on that? It's something I said. Why? Because there's no covenant like Christ has a covenant with God and his church. Now look at your neighbor and say, but practice makes perfect. What you're doing single is what you're going to do when you get married. If you dishonorable single, you're going to be dishonorable married. Ah, uh, yeah. You do know that getting married don't make nobody faithful. Husband means house band. When there is no husband in the house, it's hard for the house to stay together. This is going to mess us up because I wish I was talking to at least a thousand black women. Because we've left you by your lonesome so long that you thought it was ordained from God by God for you to keep the house together. Y'all ready? This is going to mess you up. If the man ain't working, God's intention for the family is still working. Me, the men and I were talking yesterday. Watch this. This is going to bless you. Pastor, I'm going to prove it statistically, but I'm going to prove it in an observation as well. You don't even realize that you don't have, that you grew up poor until you're an adult. <laughs> Children don't recognize that they don't have riches. I'll, 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 I'll use your God as an example. Beyonce said Beyonce said I didn't know we were poor. When the lights were out because we didn't have electricity we still had fun and a good time. Okay, watch this. When both parents attend Bible study, in addition to the Sunday service, 72% of their children attend Sunday school when grown. When only the father attends Sunday school, 55% of the children attend when they're grown. When only the mother attends Sunday school, 15% of the children attend when they're grown. When neither parent attends Sunday school, only 6% of children attend when they're grown. Another survey found that if a child is the first person in a household to become a Christian, there is a 3.5 probability that everyone else in the household will follow. If the mother is the first to become a Christian, there is a 17% probability Everyone else in the household will follow. Look at your neighbor and say, however, when the father is the first Christian, there is a 93% probability everyone else in the household will follow. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I think I need a Christian man. Denarius said, I'm a Christian man. So look at your neighbor and say, speaking in tongues ain't so bad then. Watch this. Be seated, y'all. Be seated. Watch this, y'all. The, and we don't have time, y'all. We got 10 minutes now. God created Adam and Eve. Okay? We understand the story of the fall. Because of the fall, sin entered the earth. Now, watch this. We are subject outside of God. We are submitted to a sinful nature. Watch this. Pay attention. The fall of the parents led to the first murder between the children. Interestingly enough, watch this. Murder didn't happen between Adam and Eve. You ever ask yourself, Shelby, why, Deacon Shelby, why didn't they fall out? No, Genesis 4 says they had them some good sex. Okay? Pay attention. What happened was, pay attention, what happened was the, the changing of responsibilities. Adam is the head of the wife. But when an enemy came in, he allowed her, Eve, to do all the talking. Okay, let, let me talk to, my, to, to, to my, 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 my fighters in the room. What Adam did was this. A robber came into the house called Satan. Eve said, or Adam said, uh, babe, talk him into leaving the house. H have a conversation with him. The robber that's coming into our home to take everything from us. Adam said, hey, I don't know what to say. So Eve, you do the negotiating with the enemy. It's in our context, the robber comes in and we say, babe, you hear that? Go see what's happening. Because Eve was out of her place. She should not have been talk she shouldn't have been talking to the enemy. She should not have I didn't say she couldn't chime in. But the leader of the house needs to stand in front and say, "Well, uh, uh, hold on. Who are you? Who sent you? Where are you from? What you what what why are you talking to my wife?" And because Eve stepped out of her place, And how do we know that Eve stepped out of place? God punished Adam for that very reason. In layman's terms, God was like, you allowed her to lead your decision. Watch this. Adam, you've known me before her. See, we all think that this scenario happened in a couple of days. It could have been, pay attention, it could have been that Adam was uh, 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 single for a thousand years. We all think that Genesis 1, 2, 3, and 4 happened within days and hours. No, Adam could have been by himself, just him and God, for at least a thousand years. 
Pay attention. So Adam has a close relationship with God. And he and get this, and he's distracted. He allows, pay attention, because she has the same anointing, she has the same power, she has the same intellect. He allowed her power, her intellect, her anointing to intimidate him to the place where he stepped back when he should have been stepping in front. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in your place. And so because they got out of place, sin entered the world and the consequences, pay attention, first manifested through the children. Am I making sense this morning? Watch this, y'all. Hear me. You and I are the product of our parents infractions. Now because I'm trying to grow you up so you don't keep going to therapy about what happened when you were six. Here's why. Because you're having sex. And that means you have the potential to have your own child. And so what you got to go ahead and do is, is hurry up your healing from your mama and daddy and make sure that you don't, here it is, you don't pass it down to the next generation. Because the enemy wants to hold your family hostage for 1,000 generations. Yeah. And so it's a, it, it sounds fancy, Elder Lynn, to say I have anxiety. And it sounds good now. It's popular to say my therapist but if you keep going on with trends and not really doing the work hear me the enemy is going to swoop into your bloodline and hijack your grandchildren and your and their children and you will be the person responsible why am I responsible because you were the first generation that walked with God Watch this, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this popularity. We're seeing this trend to say, I have anxiety. And so what's blowing my mind, this is how I know the counseling ain't working, Elder uh, Court, is because uh, you've been saying anxiety for five years. Uh, if it was working, I used to have anxiety. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, obviously there is no deliverance with the therapist. I need a beginning and I need a genesis and I need an exodus. Does this make sense to you? Watch this. So hear me very carefully. I think what's happening, pay attention to this, be seated three minutes. You cannot just willy nilly say you want five kids. You got to stop doing that. Hear me. Family, don't miss this. Family is not for your personal exploitation. That's five human beings you got to raise up, break curses, teach, train, impart into. Come on, y'all. And if I'm making horrible man decisions now, what the devil you think you're going to do with five children? You have bad taste because your taste, your soul has not been sanctified. And if you go out and have uh, children, hear me, do you understand God loves your children that you have not even, you have not even uh, put in the world yet more than he loves you? Because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't know if you're successful until your grandchildren know Jesus. So watch this. This is what I see. I see a lot of y'all parading your children around like they're prizes. I see you doing it all the time. Hear me. Stop. Here's why. Because you're not successful until their children. Am I making sense to you? It, hear me. This is why I think it is asinine to celebrate children too soon. We should not be doing gender reveals. We should have our babies in the house of God. 
Pray over my womb. So this is my problem. You spent $2,000 to blow pink and blue smoke, but you won't come to church every day so we can lay our hands on your stomach and not just tell you a gender, but go into the heavens and snatch down purpose and destiny. Uh I will not be doing a gender reveal. I'm not going to reveal a gender until I can stand before you and tell you what God told me about my seed. And if I hand the mic to average people that do, that's doing gender reveal and I say, tell me what the Lord says over your seed. They could not say it. That's the purpose of a prophetic gift, ladies and gentlemen. The purpose of a prophetic gift is not to be putting your face on a, co a conference flyer and being brag and bragging about who's inviting you. Because I know prophets that have children and their children don't like God, don't love God, can't stand the church. Because most prophets are horrible parents. God gave you a prophetic gift so that you can train your children. This don't, you don't like this. Hear this. Life is not about you and yours. Your own house, your own car. Hear this. You are grown now. And so you aspire marriage and you aspire, you aspire a, a, a relationship and you aspire family. Well, when you have family, children, God expects your family to look like the kingdom of heaven. Y'all didn't hear that part. I'm going to say it again. When you get married and you start having children, God needs to look at the family and look, watch this. And the family should look just as powerful and pure as the church. So watch this. It is time out, hear this, for Christians dating Muslim men and marrying them. What? On the planet. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to piss you off. What would make you as a spirit-filled believer walk down the aisle and give a covenant with a man that, or a woman that says, I don't believe in your God? Watch this. At basic level, you will have warfare marrying somebody from another denomination. I've seen marriages fail because he grew up a Baptist and she non-denominational. So what do you think is going to happen if you know Yeshua HaMashiach and he only worships his car? Watch this. Pay attention. Hear this. Men, don't get married. We keep talking about Pastor V. We, get talk, we keep talking about choosing the right woman. I, I've been saying this all weekend, especially my, the, my men of God who have great callings on their life. If you are under me, submitted and connected to me, I will not place you in a church. If you're marrying a if you can't look at me and say she's the love of my life. You will not shepherd anyone. Hear this. Because now, watch this, Pastor V. Vengeance is coming. Reparations are coming. Because what y'all have done is worship married pastors. And God is about to flip the script. Because God never called a man to get married because he's about to be a preacher. You don't get married because you're about to come into the pulpit. Now, pay attention to what I'm about to say to you. Pastor, why are you saying that? Because, pay attention to what I'm saying. Men of God, do not choose for your work. You got to love her. And you got to love her so much that when you don't want to love her, you love her still. And until, hear me, if a man is doing this, I'm talking to every man, 
Every man, if a man is going back and forth about should you marry a particular woman, that's not the one. I'm going to say it again so you don't act like I heard, you didn't hear me. If you are vacillating, I mean an inch, that's not the one. Pastor Todd, I can say this type of stuff now because I'm grown. If you vacillate, if you're trying to figure out is it's going to be somebody better out there. She's not the one. Why? Because God, hear this, Jesus uh, is convinced. The Bible says this. People need to understand this. What real evangelism is. God is, Jesus, when he comes back, he's not coming back for the world. He's coming back for his wife. Which is the church. If a man is wondering if someone, if somebody out there better, that means he's not willing to sacrifice and die. To, that, hear me. If a man goes into a marriage saying, I might as well do it because she's been loyal, he's going to cheat. All right. Here, here's one. Here's an analogy. Hear this. I heard this. And I'm going to say it to you. Heard this uh, somewhere. And I'm going to say it to you. Who's Jesus? If I'm to, if I am to marry as a husband, y'all love this. If I'm to marry as a husband, as Christ loves the church, who's Jesus' side chick? Who's Jesus' just in case the church don't work out? That means the man, get this, is completely faithful to an unfaithful people. Don't go down the aisle until you are willing to die. I ain't talking about physical and uh, literally, I'm talking about every temptation you willing to cry over <sighs> why because when a man is unstable in his affections in his mind spiritually hear this he cannot lead his family into being a kingdom model Am I making sense to you? Okay, watch this. Watch this. How do I have a kingdom family? I'll finish the rest of it in a minute. How do I have a kingdom family? Both parents need to know Jesus Christ. So they can both submit to God first and then each other. Did that make sense to you? Both parents need to serve Jesus. I'm not talking about, watch this, y'all. Both parents, whoever you marry, if you're married, you need to hear this. If you're married, then you have to do some intercession if your spouse is not saved. If you are married and your, uh, your spouse is saved, can y'all give God a praise? But we have Christian couples. <laughs> both, both, both parents, if you hear me, y'all, you got to be serious about this. You can't, I, I don't want y'all just coming to church and looking good. You got your brown and blue on and all your wands. But I want you to th hear this. I want you to think about this. That you have to, watch this, Pastor V, this is going to mess you up. There has to be zero compromise. And, when, and watch this. And if you get older and you're still single, specifically as a woman, culture, your family will start telling you, well, lower your standards when it comes to spirituality. The standards that should be lowered should be, uh, he got to make $2 million per minute. the likelihood of that happening is slim to none. So the standards that we should be uh, uh, lowering, y'all, is where he works. I want a man that owns his own business. Why do you want that? The standard that should never be compromised is he must, she must know Jesus. Watch this. The reason I keep saying he is because typically when men are ready to get married, we never go out and get the stripper that we gave money to. We never marry fun, fun girl. Ever. We go out and get us a wholesome woman.
Does that make sense? I want y'all to understand that. That watch this. When a man is ready, women, you will. You. I'm not trying to be offensive, but I am. Women, you, you all, you all will go out and marry any person that gives you attention. Y'all real quiet. Y'all would just shout me down in a minute. Let me get out of that. Now, I'm going to say it one more time. Watch this. Here's why. And here's why you're susceptible to it. Because you are, Eve is your mother. Eve is your mother. Watch this. That, that anyone can pull a woman in through conversation. You ever wonder, you ever wonder why a girl can be so fine and her and, and, and her dude like look like the bottom of your shoe? Like how he got her. Listen, it wasn't his looks. At first it was. Listen, I know women that will say that, that first time meeting a guy, I would never date him. Six weeks later, he ain't so bad. Why? Because he has wooed her in through conversation. Does that make sense? Okay. Watch this. Number two, the word of God. Here's some kingdom families, y'all. The word of God needs to be the foundation of the home. How? It should be taught and demonstrated on a daily basis. So here's what I'm going to impart into you. We are not in the season where you can just wait until you come to church to open your Bible as a, as a family. Watch this, men of God, men of God, men of God, say yeah. yeah. Watch this, a little bit louder, y'all. Men of God, say yeah. yeah. Ladies, calm it down. Watch this. You, you, you must be proficient in the word of God because you should be having regular Bible studies in your home. Watch this. If you're not having a personal Bible study now as a single man, you're not going to have Bible study. Watch this. When she comes into your home. The children hear this. The children there must write this down. There must be incentives for uh, scripture memorization. They don't want to read it on their own until they get filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not waiting on you to get filled. I want you to know it. And so for every scripture that you memorize, I'm going to give you five or six dollars. I'm going to take you to a particular place. Watch this, y'all. Here's what I believe the enemy has used to infiltrate the home. Write this down. It's a very, very big word. TV. Y'all remember a time where you would sit at the dinner table. There was no TV. You would just sit at the dinner table and have, uh, have dinner with your family. Y'all remember when that TV came, the, t the dinner table turned into the living room so we could all watch the TV. Then from that, everybody started getting TVs in their own rooms. So dinner turned from family dinner to you get, you, mama cook, you get your plate, and you go to your room. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to bring that back. When y'all turn 18, 19, we understand that y'all don't even want to be around parents anymore. But between the, b between the time you come out to at least 17 years old, I'm going to create, pay attention, I have to create a ritual that we sit down at least three times a week to have, get this, conversation not just about how was your day, but we have to have conversations about revelations from the word of God. Does that make sense? Watch this. I'll give you one more and then we're going to go. Watch this. I know everybody here is, is you, you on your boss tip. But once you have a family, husband, wife, children, fellowship needs to be a, a more of a priority than hustleship. Because fellowship gives you an opportunity to communicate. And find out, watch this, it gives you an opportunity to, to communicate and also, watch this, y'all, investigate. I need to ask questions like, uh, uh, do you have, do you like somebody at the schoolhouse? Watch this, y'all. You have to learn how to, 
You have to learn how to have conversation. This is why your children are not going to come and tell you about stuff because they're not used to saying things. You have to create an environment where when you ask, is, if somebody is somebody touching you down there? Now, let me help you understand something. If you don't prioritize fellowship, hear me. Uh, uh, the person that's babysitting that. This is what I'm. All uh, 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 right. Hear me understand this. Let me tell you something about Victor Powell. He didn't care if they were blood. You can't you can't you can't watch my children. And I didn't understand that at first. But then I got older and realized that dad knew the family members that were kind of off. And I don't want my children to be around that. And so some of y'all got to come out. You got to come out. You got to get your head on. You just dropping your kids off to everybody because you got to go work or you got to go hunt. It's one of the two. And I'm saying to you, the person that you least expected will be violating your child. Does that make sense? So watch this. We have to have constant fellowship because I'm going to be asking you questions. Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me how you felt. How did you feel about losing the basketball game? How did you feel about uh, me having to whoop you? How did you feel about this? What's going on? Do you like somebody? Is anybody touching you? Is anybody? I noticed you've been sad lately. Dad would always say, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Tell me what's on your mind. And if you somewhere giggling and swiggling, with single, broke, busted, disgusted friends. And he, let me go here. And if you ain't sitting down talking to your husband, see the problem, ladies, you don't know how to talk. That man will tell you everything on his mind if you talk to him while massaging his foot, while massaging his kneecaps, while massaging his shoulder. You say, we need to talk. No, get some oil, some baby lotion, rub it together huh? and rub his ankles and say, huh? baby, tell me, you know, I ain't like how you said, baby, he'll be like, baby, I won't ever do that again. You have to know, pay attention, where to touch a man. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about every man will talk. You have to learn how to make him talk. And you don't make him talk by stumping around. He will spill the beans about how he's feeling if you put him in a relaxed state. Y'all using TikTok for everything other than what you should be looking, uh, uh, using it for. Get on TikTok uh, and learn how to massage feet and learn how to massage shoulders because it's going to be the secret weapon to make sure the enemy don't come into your house. Y'all don't like good teaching. Watch this, Pastor Ty. And sex ain't enough because y'all married. At some point, he's going to be used to the sex. You got to find another way to touch him. <laughs> 